La cheeseburger pelada. Y los eh, over easy, turkey bacon, en el cual turkey toast is going on the way to Order up, order up, order up. It's fucking hot, man. Is that, are you feeling it? You feeling the heat now? It's warm, man. It's getting warm. I got a question to ask you. Do you take, do you take, uh, how many showers a day do you take? Just one. Just one? Yeah. Really? Even in the heat? Well, so I'll, I'll judge this. This is like, I'll go to the gym. You know, work the day and I'll go to the gym. Yeah. And then I'll take a shower when I get out of the gym. Right. That's true. Get up, you know, brush your teeth and it's your day. Gotcha. I gotcha. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking two to three shower a day, dude. I'm not, really? not going to lie to you, dog. Like, the one thing is, the one thing is, okay, I'm a big dude, so I'm be fucking sweating on just some, some super simple shit, right? Yeah. But I can't go to bed without taking a shower. Right. I mean, I feel that. I you know feel what I'm saying? That. Because, dude, like, I love fucking, I love the when my sheets smell fucking fresh. My lady, she's all about that shit. She loves doing the, the, the sheets and making sure they smell great. You know what I mean? And, like, if you come to bed all fucking nasty, then, you know, what's the point of having the clean sheets? That's so, a good point. Yeah, you know I mean. And, then, you know, if you keep them clean like that, then you don't have to wash them so often. I mean, you know, it's still like a couple of time, couple of times a week type of wash thing. Out, wash out the love stains. Wash them shits out, dude. Wash them shits out, man. But yeah, we here. Welcome to the Hood Diner. Yes, sir. Episode four. Yep. I'm DJ Sentry. I'm the homie Casual. And you're listening to... You already said that, huh? Yeah. Said you kind of fucked the format up. Sorry. Right? That's sorry. okay. That's okay. Here, Century Studios. Century Studios, baby. Man, these people need to see the wall, huh? Hopefully, I mean, hopefully some of you guys are following us on social media so you can see what it what we did. We did some work in the room today, and uh yeah, it looks pretty fucking legit. Yeah, I like the new additions to the recording space. The vibes. Yeah, man. The motherfucking vibes. By the way, this episode is sponsored by Official Clothing. Live by your own rules. Official clothing. Official.com. So, yeah, man. There's a, there's a lot, a lot to talk about tonight. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to talk about. Tonight, today, I'm sorry, whatever time you're listening to this, uh, we record at night. So. We're really late. Night owls, if you will. Yes. Like so, what time is it right now? It's like almost midnight. Yeah, yeah. So, where do we start, man? I think the biggest news is... Um, Testacion or however you pronounce his name, mm-hmm. passing away. And I mean no disrespect by not knowing how to pronounce his name. It's oh, just, man, yeah. I didn't really know how to say his name until I started hearing it said so much lately. You know what I mean? Which is crazy. I was familiar with his antics before I was familiar with his music. Right. He definitely made his, made a name for himself about, you know, being a, that, that, that dude you know, on, on some wild shit. You know? I mean, not so much wild dude, though. It's kind of... More violent things that he's accomplished that kind of brought him to the forefront. And, you know, keep in mind, he died a horrific death. Like, I don't I don't condone random acts of violence, you know, yeah. like I was really shitty, affected by his death. It's a shitty way to go out and to have it so broadcasted. At the end of the day, a person the died. You know, yeah. somebody murdered another person. Yeah. Now, he might he might have been the biggest piece, piece of shit in the world or he might have been a savior to some people because that's how the the today's youth are glorified. It's crazy, him. yeah. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people like they had, didn't they have like fucking riots and shit over there? And yeah. Was it Miami? Or they had like a tribute to him, you know? That's that's crazy, man. That's But that's like, you never know. Like this could be their generation's, you know, whatever. Tupac, Biggie, like however. And I'm not, and I'm not comparing them in any way, but... You know, just talking about the fact that it seems like a lot of the youth, a lot of these younger cats that really were into his music, it seems like it's affecting them pretty deep, you know? I, I listened to some of his music. There was one song called um, Jocelyn Flores, uh-huh. and there was another one called um, Sad. Okay. And um, 
you know, he he definitely had a dynamic range. Yeah. Um, he wasn't like these um, these rappers nowadays. These fucking little pumps or like a little, little pistol starter, smoke perps. <laughs> like they're not that that same little, type of little rappers. Xanax. Yeah, bro. They're not the the. the um, he had a different dynamic to him because he went all the way from like like extreme metal music to acoustic to just different styles and it's just his troubled past overshadowed his talent for me bro like i can't respect somebody that's accused because it hasn't gone to court yet i think like i said man i mean i don't condone any of that violence you know and this this the crazy part about it is is he was on he was about to be on trial for the whole beating of his his girlfriend or something right whatever he ex-girlfriend did. yeah ex-girlfriend okay and supposedly so, she was pregnant at the time i yes. don't know and then i've heard multiple situations different stories where it said that he made her say that it wasn't true or that she really did say that it was true i mean that's neither here nor there the dude didn't get to go on trial for it but he died and there's no shit, coming that, back that from shit that. was just broadcasted bro like it was crazy like it sucked. Like I see on Twitter where people were just like, stop, stop posting that shit, man. Like, and I think that's what affected me the most was the fact that no one was really trying to help the situation. They were just trying dude, to like get yeah. clout. Like they were just trying to get clout off of fucking someone's death, bro. That's crazy. I and think that was just the one dude that's like, opened oh, the door gonna... and checked for the pulse. Right. Some, the well, yeah, yeah. Kudos to eventually. him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you didn't save him. He was not, he wasn't able to be saved, but People were just trying to like upload that to the internet and like get monetary value for it first. Like, hit up uh, TMZ, right? You know, and they'll cut you a check. God damn, that's that's crazy. That's the society we live in right now. And I get, you know, like I said, I seen I've seen a lot of people posting the whole shit where they're like, "Before you go R.I.P. in this motherfucker, let's not forget this right here," you know. But it trips me out because it's like, like I said earlier, like I was telling you earlier, it's like the same shit where like, well, these motherfuckers, just some, some of these people that are saying this shit are the same dudes that still fuck with Chris Brown. That picture of Rihanna was around for a while. That shit was sad. You know, know what I mean? I don't know how you could hit my baby like that. Oh, hey, I'm just saying like, I don't know. I feels like it feels like certain people will give certain people a pass. You know, he died before he got to go go on trial and shit, but he's already guilty in the eyes of everybody. You know what I'm saying? For and, sure. But I mean, and I mean, I'm I'm just I'm fucking super Switzerland on the situation. You know what I mean? Because I didn't even try to piss people off, and I just and I, honestly, it doesn't. He wasn't somebody that I listened to, so I don't want to waste a like. I'm not saying waste, but I don't really want to give my opinion on something that like. I mean, it, it, it's sad. But it didn't affect me like the way when pa- when Pog died. No, like, no, that's for a totally sure. different situation. Sure. When fucking when Prodigy fucking died, when Pimp C died, like that shit affected me way more. But like you said, I mean, that could have been there. This generation's Pimp C and shit like that. I just heard, I heard Joe Budden talking about that. He had spoken with him and shit, and that it seemed like the dude was trying to like, you know, turn his shit around and and. You know, yep. regardless, man, fucked up way to go out. But I got to ask you this. Did you by any chance see the shit where it's like the conspiracy where they say that wasn't him? Oh, because of no because tattoo of the, on his face. Because of the face tattoo that's not there? Yeah. Like, I was kind of tripping on that. I was like, dude, that's that's a little weird, don't you think? A little bit. I mean, is he chilling with, with Cuba? <laughs> is he chilling with Tupac in Cuba? Mm. You never know. I mean, they're just hanging out on the beach right there, and you never know. And then uh, the other, the other dude. Uh, I'm sorry if I say his name wrong too. Jimmy Wopo or you know Wo- Wopu or whatever the hell his last yeah, name. Yeah, that I'm one sorry. Pittsburgh rapper. But that dude got shot too, right? That's fuck, man. I feel it's fucked up because like the past three podcasts, we've been talking about death, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. We kind of got to move on, dog. I mean, unless you got some other shit you want to say on this, but. No, no, I definitely want to wrap it up. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's like, I'm, I'll leave you with this. I had a friend that is a, he happens to be a DJ. Right. And we were talking about it this week. We were texting back and forth and he was just like, I don't stand up for him for all that other shit, that rapey shit he did or the woman beating and all that. He's all, fuck that. He goes, but I did respect his art form. So, you know, it's sad that a misguided youth 
was only 20 years old. He got his life taken from him before he could even serve time for his crimes or get absolved from them. Yeah. He couldn't clear his name. He didn't have enough time to clear his name. Yeah. And other than that, I can't really offer any more time or really um, sentiment on it just because I still got to work. I still got to, you know, feed yeah, my kid. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And, but it's uh, crazy. But it, like I said, it is kind of crazy how, you know, how music will affect people like that. Think about, let me, let me think about this. Think about the day John Lennon got shot. That it's kind of apples to oranges at that point because you're, cause, well, well, honestly, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, but, but you know, but like that time, like John you're Lennon, comparing, was on time. you're comparing a fucking. Oh no, no, I'm not saying like that. I'm talking, to, I'm talking about no, I'm talking about the effect it had on the people because Bro. of the death of somebody. I'm not comparing him to that. I'm just comparing him to the fact that somebody that you loved and listened to was shot. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, I'm right, talking right. about like the feeling. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, bro. John Lennon, I don't know. And before anybody hits me with hate mail, that's not what I was going for. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the feeling of losing something that you loved, you know? Like that, the day that fucking Pac died, bro, like I fucking cried. I'm not even going to fucking front. I, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Pimp C, dude? I was like, come on, man. Like, are you serious? But yeah, dude, it's just, it's a trip. It's, it's sad. It's a sad situation. But yeah, man. I will say I will say this though. I will say this though. Um do you think do you think that you might want to sign up for for the Space Force? Hey bro, Space Force, bro. Pay me 100 racks a year. I'll go up in space and just space man a gun. Force. It's going to fucking happen, dude. He's going to do that shit. A Flint, Michigan don't got no water, but he's going to make a Space Force. I'm with it, bro. That's right. Hey, but the same people that want to like have him impeached. He just signed that little, that little act he did to uh, keep the immigrants back with their parents and shit. Right? Not, yeah, he should have done that. No, but he did though. He I mean, did. He could have. He could have not done that. Right? That's a, that was one of the. I options. mean, he waited a while, right? I mean, yes. What yes, about like but, Puerto Rico and shit but, like that? Like, what the fuck? Like, he hasn't done shit for them. That's shitty. Yeah, I feel like he was cornered on this one. He's and like, "Well, they don't provide to the infrastructure, so <laughs> yeah, I need to do something to clear my name right now. I'm not, I'm not doing too good in the polls, nah, man. But you want to know something, dude? Like on some, on some, on some, some funny shit. On some funny shit. The other day, when I was scrolling through the book, I land, <laughs> I landed on this shit called the Air Sex Championships. Okay. Air now, sex championships. The air sex championships, bro. Like, I'm not even, like, it was the funniest shit. Well, basically what people do is they go up on stage and they, like, you know how you play the air guitar type shit like that? Well, you, you fucking, you go up there, dude. You, you air fuck? You air fuck, bro. You have a fucking, you just have a blast up there. I, I watched, like. I don't know how many minutes of this shit, but I was sucked in and it was crazy. And they give people awards for like the best air fucking. And it's it's kind of crazy, bro. And it's a big deal. It's a, it's a big deal. It's called the Air Sex World Championships. And um, let me see. Where do they have this shit at? I think it's in Lafayette. Where's I've, that? I've done a lot of dry humping in my life. Well, dude, this is where you could get paid to show off your best dry hump. Like before I started getting jiggy, you know? Yeah. Like, because chicks wouldn't let you just get down back in the day. Like honestly, you, like to anybody listening right now, please just go to like YouTube and check out Air Sex World Championship. Just put that shit in and search that shit and just watch a little bit of it. And it's fucking hilarious as shit. You know, you used to have that R&B CD you would put on when you're talking on the phone and shit. Yeah. Like you were like right by the CD player, so like if your mom picked it up, you'd turn the music off real quick. Yeah. So she don't hear you macking on the phone and shit. And you're fucking drinking, you're fucking truth about it, Ronnie. <laughs> well, I mean, that one was a little. Did I, did I take it back too far? Yeah, that one did was I a go before my time. Damn, I just showed my age. I don't give a fuck, bro. I mean, I was just a generation She's after. Sweet little girl. No, I mean, I know the song. It's yeah, just. No, I'm talking about getting jiggy with it to the, to the Bobby Brown, bro. I want to rock with you, baby. Pull up one of them air humping videos. I want to see how this. many babies. No, 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 no. I'll let you do that later. We got a lot of, we got a lot okay, of shit okay. to cover right here. But don't, me, don't um, let me forget. 
But okay, so check this out. This is some this is some cool shit. But I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you do your thing after this. But let me just tell you this. I was on Twitter and I saw this thing about um, service dogs. I know I was kind of telling you a little bit about it, but what's really it's, it's, it's actually kind of crazy. It was a lady who was tweeting about the situation and she said that a service dog came up to her and there was no like person with her. So she was like, OK, this is kind of odd. And then she said that the dog just started to take off. Right. So she was like, OK, maybe I should follow this dog. And the dog took her like down the block a little bit around this to this alley and shit. And the fucking lady was on the floor having a seizure and shit. So she was able to get there and like hold her head up. And, you know, assess the situation, call somebody, call ambulance, call 911 and shit. And it said that and I never knew this. The only reason why I'm passing this along is because if you ever see a service dog without its human, something's fucking wrong. Like it should be like it's like there's a situation going on. You need to follow that dog and that dog will take you right to where something's going wrong. You know what I mean? Which is crazy. Did you know that? I didn't know. I that. didn't know that. shit. I had no idea. So I thought that that was cool. I wanted to share that shit right there. What's wrong, Glassy? <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> that's fun. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, that's dope. I mean, I would have never thought. I don't know. You could teach a dog to do that. That's pff, fucking dog. The dog's man. just looking at you, fucking so, shaking on the floor. Yo. <laughs> and then fucking it's all, hey, homie, come help my other homie. <laughs> yeah, situation critical. Follow me. Rough, rough. Yep. Yeah, that's good yeah, shit. That's Paw Patrol if I ever heard it. Right there. Right there. Right I'm going to tell Aubrey, my daughter, I'm going to be like, damn, that dog shits on Paw Patrol. Shit's on him. Shit's. She'd be like, shat. stop, dad. Stop. Shatner. Yeah, man. But you know what? Let's folk, let's do a complete 180 out of like depressing shit. Let's, right. let's get into music. I didn't think the air sex championship was depressing. No, 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 no. Prior to that. Though, <laughs> I tried to, I no, tried to lighten you know the mood. <laughs> it did, but it just felt like, all right, we need a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. No, take it out. Take classy it, it up with you. all this smut. You know? Show me what you got. <laughs> What did you think of that new Nas album? Oh man, that's another recurring th- theme. Uh, all the Kanye shit, the that Kanye we've been stuff, about. you know, because it's my, death and Kanye. All my homies, this podcast that, is about all my homies that hate that hate Kanye so much are probably getting ready to turn it off right now. Every podcast they're like, mm, he's talking about Kanye. Fuck this. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I was, I was disappointed. I was, I was too, disappointed. Bro. I was disappointed. I wanted a lot more out of this album. Especially I, it being seven tracks. Like, and I feel like, I feel like there was like three. I think it was like four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. The one where Kanye and him get all like singy and shit. If I had everything. Oh, everything. That's my favorite song. I could do anything. Yeah, that was, that was all right. And you know what's funny about that song to me? I feel like Kanye's a smart motherfucker. Like, I feel like he made that song with the intention of it being for like a commercial or like a movie. Like, think about that. Like I, I could just see like All some dude, some dude that, that couldn't run the fucking 40 in fucking five seconds or something. And he's just hauling as it. I could change everything. You know, well, it's I mean? everything or, better in slow-mo. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That, you know, for everybody that didn't see me, I was doing the, I was doing the running arms. I like, I like the wordplay. On which one? Um, on that song, it said, I could change anything. If I change anything, it would be everything. Like, yeah. yeah. It's that song has a lot of like. It, it's not just like a pop song. Like Nas is a good lyricist, you know. Yeah. Like one of the best, and his mm-hmm. his take on vaccines, you know. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was four, five, and six that I was talking about. The first one was called Bonjour. Bonjour is good. Number four. And then everything, and then Adam and Eve was just, see, that's where the way he came in with some of that, those little sounds and shit, that is the Nas shit that I was like, dude, see, if he would have came with this type of shit on more than one track. What do you like think of the cop shot the kid beat? What do you mean? That's that Slick Rick it's that sample. Slick Rick shit? I don't know, man. I, I didn't mean, like it at first, but I, then I listened I, to it again and again and again, and I'm like, all right, I, I like the song now. Yeah. I guess I could grow on you. Yeah, it's all right. I don't know. I thought it was. It sounded cookie cutter at first. I thought it was. And then you listen to it over and over again. You kind of get, yeah, okay, I like that. I thought it was all right. So I'm not going to lie to you. You know whose album I like more than Nas's album? No, but but real quick before that, uh, Five Mic System, what what does it get on that on your five mic? Two? Two. Damn, that's the lowest rating on the Hood Diner so far. (sighs) I'm sorry, bro. You got Okay, yeah, honestly, no, yeah, I'd have to. I can be generous to say 2.5 because it's Nas. 
He's gonna fucking fuck around and win a Dundee award and shit. I don't know, bro. You watch The Office, right? Oh fuck yeah, I love this Office, man. I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, I think like five episodes from it being over. I'm in the final season right now. I've been watching it on Netflix. So it's so you would have to label a good or a bad album. Is there a middle? No, no, it's good or bad. It's bad. Okay, bad. And then, but like I said, you know whose album I dug more than that? J Rock. Oh, for sure. The J Rock sure. album was for pretty dope. Sure. I listened to that one today while I was win, doing some win, work. Win, 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 win. Yes, I thought that that was pretty hard. There should be like a rule where we can't take a drink at the same time. <laughs> the ch- oh my <laughs> it was like it was like an awkward silence right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in there too. <laughs> hey. It's like taking a shot. We're going to start drinking like the drink champs. Yeah, but, but one at a time, though. One okay. at a time. One at a time. But yeah. Um, Do you think the beats were tailored to him? To who? Nas. No. You think it's the what, same formula? And that's, yes. You know, the other day where you, you said that, you actually did call that. You were like, you can't give Nas the same beats you give, um, you know. Pusha. Pusha. And, I and said Kate that right Cuddy. on a previous you podcast. Right. You were very right. I honestly felt that Kanye would have tailored to Nas a little bit better but I feel like it was just something that I feel like it was something that they had just kind of put together like not like they, they didn't got take together a lot of time on fucking... yeah they put this together quick like Kanye came up with this idea where he was like dude we got this album we got this album we should come and put together this one real quick and then this way we drop four instead of three you know what I mean like I don't know I think it was more about the experience of living with somebody for like four months I guess yeah you could say that I mean, dude, like it was because pushing them went to Utah, yeah, for like three weeks. Yeah, they said in the first ten days he didn't even fucking see Kanye. He was just choosing beats, like he didn't do any work. Nice. So when he went to Wyoming for the other shit, like I don't know, bro. It's like it's just an experience that he's just creating with these people right now. You know, I get it. I get where he what he's what he's doing, but I he's changing like- the game. Like he's making the industry standard seven songs. You understand that? Like I don't. I, don't, I can't fucking think that. about this. The Carters, which we're going to talk about, has nine tracks. That's true. So it's changing the formula. Like it's not just. Um, and it was pretty crazy how it just came out of nowhere. Nothing like the Hood Diner anymore. They don't serve you gluttonous portions on albums. Gluttonous. You know. <laughs> they don't do that on fucking albums anymore, which is cool. But you just got to make sure your shit's on point. If you're going to be releasing an album. Because these people are getting money off of streams, bro. Yeah. And it's all calculated because if your entire album can get streamed millions of times, then you're going to go platinum every single time. Yeah. Sell physical copies, and I think that will dictate your power as an artist. Yeah. Because... Well, not just that. I mean, the touring. Is touring, yeah, at. for sure. I so mean, see, like, that's actually kind of cool because think about this. Like, everybody that was that had tickets to... To this Jay Z and Beyonce show that's already coming to Phoenix and shit like that. Yeah. Like now there's bonus material. You know what I mean? There's this new album with the shit that they're gonna be dropping. And then I guess they, I guess they're bringing Khaled with them too, with DJ Khaled. I don't really want to see a DJ Khaled DJ set. I don't know. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't just, just, just to say I saw it. Just I mean, yeah, to say I saw yeah. It. I mean, you know, to be honest, I mean, I fuck I'd with rather him do it in Vegas. Like, like I'd rather do it in Vegas. He's the one that like, you know. Got me really sucked into fucking Snapchat, bro. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know you, you know the whole story, like why he got famous, right? Well, like, you got lost on the jet. There scene. you go, like that yeah. story, dude. Like that was the like somewhere back there. I mean, I had it, but my nephew was the one. He was like, "Dude, do you follow DJ Khaled?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Dude, you got to go follow him right now, dude. Like it's the funniest shit, and it's fucking viral." He's like, "Right now, go go get it." And I, <laughs> I remember watching his Sick ass dogs on him. all fucking in the dark in his. <laughs> It's key shit. Just try to fucking find his way home, dude. Like that's the funniest shit, bro. That's some good shit. Yeah, that is that is. Uh, I used to that's follow viral him. comedy. I used to follow him. Yeah, but then seeing his shoe room and kind of put mine to shame, so I was just like, nah, I can't see this anymore. It's, it's nice to see people doing good. No, for sure, for sure. But I mean, his shoe collection is <laughs> ain't something. No, ain't no haters on the hood. Coveted the hood diner podcast. No, man. no, but I just don't want to see somebody stunt. <clears throat> I said, hate watching cribs. Oh man! Like, fuck these motherfuckers see, for living better you know than me. Cribs is pretty fabricated from. No, I, if even if it wasn't, 
they're still living better like, like, you know, at least for the day you know than who I kept was. it real on Cribs was fucking Red Man did you ever see Red oh, Man oh yeah when they pulled to the spot dude his apartment he was living in a fucking apartment in, New, in like New York or Brooklyn or some shit like that but it was hood he didn't give a fuck <laughs> and then you know who was fucking the shit too uh, Trick Daddy Trick Daddy was dope too he he, he had like a <laughs> modest looking house and shit he but, twins oh my goodness yeah. they just look like they went and cashed out like a Kaufman and brought home real quick and they were like alright I'm gonna park my donks outside <laughs> they had some sick whips though Master P's crib though <sighs> the fucking elevator dude the fucking gold ceilings and shit that's crazy that's crazy, man. Now, what did you think about? Um, did you hear about? I know you heard about it, but what do you think about the Bodega Boys getting a? But you know what? This 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 focus on that Jay and and, and Beyonce. Oh, yeah, before I'm, we so, get I'm to sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, I'm high. I'm sorry. No, it's I'm all sorry. good. It's I all good. You, you know. I can understand. You but know, you know what we did prior to this podcast. <laughs> You're already puff puff um, podcast. So what did you think of that album? Okay, I didn't like it, but. There was like at least two, three good songs that I like. The first one, this, let's call it like Summertime, something yeah. like that. The very first song, that song is dope. Like, I feel like that's the one they're going to, that's, that's going to be a good one. And then, you know, did they drop a video to one of them? Yes, yeah, so I was going to bring that up. It was um, Ape Shit. Ape Shit. And, and they recorded they, it they, at in the, the Louvre. Louvre. In yeah, France. Man, is that in France. Paris? It's like a very, very high end fucking museum. Like, like when you're in Europe, that's where you want to go. You want to see the Louvre. You so know? basically, the Carters were flexing, but it's like they, not, they pulled the ultimate flex on everybody, you, right? Yeah, you got to understand the gravity of it because it's not like you can just call them up and say, "Hey, I want to shoot a music video." Like they're gonna <laughs> laugh at you. It's young. It's your boy. No, they'll laugh at you, bro. And they'll <laughs> hang up the phone. So it takes a mogul like Beyonce and another mogul like Jay Z to get into a situation like that. And can you imagine what they paid for? To fucking shoot live in there because you can't they, take pictures in there. What if they did it? No, bro, they did. Think they had to pay? No, fuck yeah. I want to see some behind the scenes. Shows. I want to see a fucking invoice. You know, there's like a. I want to see an there's invoice. There's a video. There's a video that's being put together right now that's like behind. It's the probably like ten million. She's like, yeah, you can shoot it, but it's gonna be like a ten million dollar charge. And that's true because basically, like, she was making faces in front of like the Mona Lisa and shit, right? Like, dude, they were having dance sequences and all that shit. It was a aesthetically, it was a beautiful video. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I gotta watch that. My problem with that album is Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. She makes great music. Right. But. You just think she was unnecessary? Yeah, like, because she's trying to like, she, you know, when you're in middle school and yeah. you learn how to cuss for the first time and you just cuss for no fucking reason. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I just fucking, you know, got to go to she fucking went, work. She, and, she, she got a little dirty on you this know, one, huh? I got to go fucking do homework with my fucking pencils and, you know, yeah. just using, overusing you know. yeah. cuss words for no reason. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel when I hear her curse. There's a whole, because, lot, of, whole lot of parents are not letting their little kids yeah, have this Yeah, like you're a fucking um, she was name brand. About, I'm that bitch and fuck yeah. this. Yeah, 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 and she's like, "Get off my dick!" I'm like, "Come on, mm. now, come on, clean it up, clean yeah, it up, get off it." But, that, but yeah, right there, I'm, I'm I'm giving two mics. She had a church upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She came up in the church, you yeah, know, singing. She, hooked, all up, that she shit. hooked up with an ex crack dealer. Well, oh, you know, my favorite song is there uh, from that CD is "Nice" by Pharrell, with produced by oh, Pharrell. Yeah, that one was dope. The beat is just crazy. That is crazy. It takes you back to like. Um, 2003, 2005, Pharrell. Yeah. I like so that. I like that era. That, that's yeah. my favorite era of rap. Well, yeah. from him. Yeah. But, that's no skateboard Yeah, pee. for me, I'd have to give that CD or that album a, a three a three out of five. I think the... Yeah, um, I'm 2.5. 2.5. I think it was better than the Nas. So if, if you're looking for something... See, you're looking not, for see, something that, new. See, that's where I'm like, like I can look at the playlist that I saved because I listened to the whole thing, and then the ones that I like, I kept them. And in the Beyonce album, I only have those two songs, and where on the Nas album, I got three. So by default, <laughs> by default, yeah, I I, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, the, the, those two, that that Adam and Eve song, that one was dope. I fuck with that one. I'm far too far from the apple tree. That shit. Yeah, that one was dope. I like, like I that said, I, I wish it would have been a um, Jay Z album only. Yeah, I think that would have enjoyed that a lot more than a dual album from them. Yeah. It's cool when you do Crazy in Love and you do this and you do that. That's cool. Just one song, just yeah. one, a whole album. You guys telling how you guys are nasty and you guys have crazy money and like we'll never live like you. Like that's cool. I almost fucked that bitch up when I seen her and like Jay Z's like, oh whoa, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what do you mean? We were being real with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
She let it be known. They fucking, yeah. Apparently things are all good with the Carters. I mean, they make too much money to get a divorce. Right. I don't know, man. And we were talking about that with Kanye and Kim, you know, when he was wilding out and they said that in the song. I I feel like there's already a prenup somewhere. That's a common theme, though. Like, why fuck your money up? Like, I'll live unhappily for another 10 years, 15 years, and then I'll get away from him. We're talking about Mama Jenner. Oh. Mama Jenner don't fuck around. Yeah. That, that lady is the best businesswoman, but terrible parent. Yeah. 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 But so yeah, I, man. Uh, so, yeah. So, I was, I, was, I was trying to ask you about that. What did you think about the, the Bodega Boys and Charlemagne the God getting their own HBO versus I, I enjoy Showtime the brand shit. of comedy. I yeah. enjoy it. So, for me, I, I subscribe to HBO now. Yeah. So, I have the back catalog of all the games. So, Game you'll be able to see Charlemagne, but the Bodega Boys, how yeah. are you going to watch that? Um, you going to have to fucking I don't dark know. network that shit? No, Dark you know web? what? I'm, I might not be able to tune in. You know? yeah, that's, see, that sucks. Because I mean, I'm not going to spend could, another Because I was able to watch them now. Where are they on now again? Vice. Vice Land. Vice Land. I think they're going to retain that show. You think so? I mean, I would hope. I think no. I think they're like taking the whole shit with them. I think it's Bodega Boys on Showtime. Oh, work solo mente, huh? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Jesus. I won't. I won't lie. I didn't fucking click on the article the whole way. I just read the damn thing. And I was hoping you knew because I thought those were your boys. Yeah, I'm gonna do some more research on that. Okay. But as far as like, I don't. I don't see them not only being on Showtime either. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like sure. that's an option too. Like I'm. I'm not saying that that's impossible. If I was Showtime, I would throw enough money at them to where it's like, yeah, you guys aren't going back to a little network called Viceland. And Viceland's a huge channel, you know? It is. And see, you can watch that shit online for free, too. Yeah. You can't watch Showtime online for free. Showtime, I think you reach I, more people I, through Viceland, I feel but you Showtime's, get more money through Showtime. Showtime's kind of horrible. Only thing they got is, like, that good softcore porn late at night. Like, actually, you know, you know no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Cinemax. I got um, <laughs> Skinamax. Skinamax. I got, I got exposed to, like, triple X shit at a very young age. Oh, yeah, I'm just talking about no, because I had the TV. direct TV, yeah, and we had the unlocked box. Oh, yeah, so you got like the Playboy dry snitching channel, on myself right now, the Playboy channel, yeah, but we had pff, fuck the Playboy channel, we well, had the I mean, Spice yeah, channel, there dog. You go, there you go, the Spice, Spice channel. Are you yeah. kidding me right now? Yeah, that's where I learned my stroke. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. So, oh, so check this out. Uh, I got the munchies right here, so we're gonna move into something new real quick because I picked up these things on the way here. They are called uh, like they're called crunchers, and there's different flavors. What do you got? You got the Hershey's cruncher, right? Oh, yeah, I got the Hershey's. You got the Hershey's, and I got the Reese's cruncher. And basically, what it is is it's like whatever that is mixed with like chocolate, and just this little ball of goodness and shit like that. You know what I mean? So. But they might be a little melted because they're kind of hot. Kind of hot in here. Pretty fire. Oh, man. The Reese's one is a shit. I fuck with Reese's. What's your favorite, favorite candy bar? Snicker almonds. Snicker almonds, huh? I'm more of a... And whatchamacallits. Damn, yeah, me too, fool. I was going to say, it's like a three-way tie between Snickers... Twix and whatchamacallit. When I'm super lit, I could fuck up like a king size of both of those right there. Like nothing. Oh, yeah. I'm fucked up many a king size. Many a king size had fallen. <laughs> <laughs> These are fire, bro. Yep. They're pretty good. I fuck with them. So, speaking of snacks, you seen any movies this weekend? Um... No movies. Just watching documentaries on Netflix. Oh, you were watching soccer too, right? Yeah, I've been watching a lot of World Cup, bro. It's been good, man. How's Mexico doing? They yeah. beat Germany. They beat Germany, huh? That's crazy. You can see that meme of the with nana the nana? Yeah, blessing yeah, the screen. Hey. Oh, man. That was everybody's nana that day. That was everybody's nana that day. Yeah. They did it, bro. They win this next game and they're um, advancing. I want to go somewhere and watch it, but it's at 8 in the morning on Saturday. Who are they playing next? I think South Korea. Mm. Okay. That's dope. 
Yeah. My dad's been betting on the on the games. He's been hitting them a lot. Has he really? Nice. I told him about Portugal. Uh, who else? Uruguay. <laughs> Uruguay. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Uruguay? You're Uruguay. <laughs> they have uh, Luis Suarez, the striker from Barcelona. Mira, he's a striker. He's a beast, man. The only way and uh, only be reason I know them is because I play the FIFA game, you know? Oh, on, on the PlayStation? That's why I tell everybody that doesn't know how to get in. Like, I want to I want to get into soccer, but it's just kind of hard because, you know, I don't know nothing. I'm like, just go buy the game, play a couple seasons in every, like, division, like the Spanish division and the English division and the Italian division. Mm-hmm. Start a couple different seasons, and you'll learn all the players' names in, like, one season. No shit, huh? Yeah, man. I went and saw. Um, I went and saw Ocean's Eight. What do you What do you think of it? It was, it was. Uh, it was all right. It was all right. The thing that bothered me about it was it basically followed the exact same format as the original Ocean's Eleven. And poor Danny Ocean is dead. You know what I mean? I was hoping he was gonna come back like at the end, but she didn't. You know what I'm saying? But. It was like all the same exact format. It was like, oh, you know, it's it's not just about the job. It's about the, the little love affair that's happened in the past and getting some revenge. And it was Danny Ocean in, in, a, in a female form, which Sandra Bullock, she looked good, but she also looked very um, Botoxy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She looked a little stretched out. Well, I feel bad. And I mean, I might have complained. I got fucking badass skin. But yeah, you know, it's, it just sucks. Like it just sucks for celebrities because you see them and you see them wanting to retain their youth and like they'll go to extreme lengths and lengths. <laughs> lengths, you say. I just sometimes, you have fun, some of those words that just like when you say them, you got to like, dude, like what the, like fucking Chris Farley and shit. He's all limit, limit, roads, row ads. <laughs> that way that full pass away was sad too. No. Speedball with the hooker. Felicito, Chris Farley. I bought his pop Funko. We talked about that last time. Yeah. Oh, but check this out. Um, speaking of speaking of movies, this weekend was the MTV um, Movie Awards and shit. Did you cap- catch any of that? No, I didn't watch it. Okay. Um, I was fucking happy as shit because Black Panther won some awards, right? From what I from what I had read, uh, Black Panther won like best movie. Um. Uh, Chadwick uh, Bosman won best hero and best performance in a movie, and El Como se llama Killmonger won best villain, and that was the one that I I remember when I left the movie theater. I told my dad, I was like, dude, he needs to win best fucking villain, dude. Like he played a great fucking. I I just felt like they killed him off too fast. They could have like capitalized off that character. He made it to the end of the movie. (laughs) No, but. Like, they could have extended him to a couple movies, you know what I'm saying? Well, he didn't want to live that way. He's like, I'd rather fucking die than live in a cage. He said that shit. He went out, dude. He went out like a G. And then this is the other thing. Speaking of that, dude. Okay, no, wait a minute. Before I go any further, I got to... This is a cool thing. Like, I don't know if you saw this part, okay? But when Chadwick Boseman or Bossman went up to receive the, the award for Best Hero... He called up this guy, and the guy's name was, um, I believe it was James Shaw Jr. James, yeah, James Shaw Jr., something like that. This dude, apparently, I don't even know exactly where, but it was at a Waffle House. The Waffle House, homie. The Waffle House dude, the dude that stopped the dude. Like, I guess they killed, like, I don't know how many people. Some people did die. Like, like two or three or four people did die, but way more people could have died. They had this dude not disarm the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Homeboy gave him the award. Damn. He's like, I want to give this to a real hero. And he fucking called him up like that, gave him the fucking award and shit. I was like, dude, like that dude right there, that motherfucker, like that's a real motherfucker right there. That's dope. I was like, you know, I, I applaud you, sir, for having that kind of fucking, you know, just being that character, man. Like he's a, he's a good dude. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, real recognized real. Fucking A. But, um. But speaking of speaking of El Killmonger, dude, did you see the trailer to Creed Two? That just came out. That motherfucker is huge, dog. Dude, like he's you know who he's fighting, right? Did you see that? The Russian son. Or- the Russian son. <laughs> the son of the, the the son of the man who killed your father. If he dies, he dies. If he dies. I he do dies. not care. Yeah. 
Dude. Hey, that, that's that what a great what a great way to come in on a second movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited to watch it. That's going to be good. That's going to like apparently he already has like he has his lady, he's got kid, he's got kids already and shit like that. Slides over there telling you 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 got something to lose. He got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's my slide right there. Pretty that's accurate. I nah, it was kind of whack. I've done it. I've done I've done I've had better. That's what she said. <laughs> Fucking Jim we Carrey, need- dude. He's like, I've had better the, the whole day. He's like, I've had better. He couldn't <laughs> believe that he said that shit. Oh, man. That's got to be one of my favorite comedies, period. Fucking Liar, Liar. Liar, Liar is a good-ass movie. That's a funny-ass movie. Wait, so which one's uh, Me, Myself, and Irene? Is that the one where he has the kids that are black? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one where I tell you, like, that's how I feel. Because remember, like, he was taking that medication. And he took homegirl to the police station and like he's like, he's like, this medication gives me horrible dry mouth. Yeah. And then when they <laughs> turn around and look at him and he looks like Fire Marshal Bill, he's right. like, oh. <laughs> like his fucking, his mouth you remember is just the all part? Bad. That's why I say like when I have cotton mouth, bro, I say I'm all Jim Carrey. Yeah. That's where that comes from. That's sad, huh? It's, just, it's an inside thing. But you know what? Now, if you ever have cotton mouth, you will think of Jim Carrey. Yeah. And me, myself, and Irene. You're going to say, Sabes que? I'm all Jim Carrey right now. Do you remember that part at the barbecue? Shout out to my homie Kilo. I know he's listening to this shit. He's gonna fucking laugh his ass off too. That's some good shit. Do right you there. remember that part at the barbecue where he's like his wife leaves him and he's talking to the neighbor? He's like, "Doesn't you know those kids' dick are bigger than those sausages?" Yeah. He said, "Don't listen to me. It's the beard talking." Woo! That was yeah, the funniest shit ever, bro. That dude's funny. Oh yeah. my god! I've seen that dude in a lot of movies. That's fucking shit. funny, bro. Hey, well, let's um, let's move on to fashion, man. Hold on, hold on. One, one last thing I got in the movie shit, and I'm pretty excited about this one because apparently the reviews are really nice on it. But are you a fan of like all the Marvel shit on Netflix? Yeah, isn't uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Luke Cage. Yeah, Luke Cage season two. And Friday, pa- right? Uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, and apparently like people are saying that it's the best season two out of all of them right now, which is kind of crazy because I'm not going to lie. Season two of uh, Daredevil was dope to me. Iron Fist better pick up. Yeah. Iron Fist kind of, eh, they, they didn't, they really got know. his introduction out. I thought there was a second season of Iron Fist already or no, 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 no Def- defenders. Oh, that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. I didn't watch it. And that. then apparently Jessica Jones didn't do too good. From no, what I heard, not a lot of watches, heard. but I, I, I'm, I'm definitely excited about Luke Cage season two. And I can't wait for season three of uh, Daredevil because that motherfucker gangster. I fuck with Daredevil. Yeah. That and hopefully they do another Punisher season too. That'd be sick too. You know what? That was a great show. Yeah. And see, people, I tell homies of mine are like, dude, is that Punisher any good? And I'm like, yeah, it's good, but have you seen Daredevil yet? And they're like, nah. And I tell them, I'm like, dude, if you really want to do it right, go watch Daredevil. Even if at least, at least you watch start at season two, because season two introduces Daredevil or uh, Punisher. Right. Like, he's one of the main bad guys in Punisher, and a lot of his backstory is in that. So you get a little bit more of a better understanding of his relationship with some of the characters if you watch Daredevil Season 2 instead of just jumping right into the Punisher. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah, but but yeah, man, let's uh, let's roll. Let's roll right into the fashion shit. What do you got for fashion? So Jay-Z just got announced as the um, creative director of Puma Basketball. I heard creative consultant. What yeah. I mean, whatever the official title is. <laughs> no, because you know what happened was they put that shit out earlier and they, they they labeled him the fucking president of the basketball section of it and shit. And right. then and then whoever owns Puma came in and said like, hey, uh, yeah, that's not right. right. Whatever you guys say, you need to rewrite this shit. So the rewrites at a, you know update creative consultant. So I was whatever like, the oh, verbiage yeah, whatever the fuck is. It is, yeah. But still, that's still that's still kind of dope. A, um, that's still pretty dope. That's a very, very uh, scary role to take because you're basically revamping a business that has been defunct for 20 years. You think he's doing it just because Kanye fucking has been making Adidas just I mean, Puma's making some splashes because they already have like the whole Adidas identity right now with uh, tastemakers like Weekend, uh, Selena Gomez, Rihanna. Um, Mm -hmm. They just pulled Big Sean from Adidas. Um, Yeah. and then the de- the basketball division, they got um, uh, DeAndre Ayton, um, yeah, Marvin Marvin Bag- Bagley from yeah. Duke, mm-hmm. um, and Zahir Smith from Texas Tech, and then uh, Michael Porter Jr. from Missouri. Oh shit! 
And uh, they also signed Rudy Gay. I don't know who he's playing with now, but, you know, I just, it's cool. But are all the shoes going to look like the Clyde? I have no idea. You know? I have no idea. For me, that's an iconic break dancing shoe. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Definitely. Seeing all the B-boys on those and shit, like in all the old videos. Yeah. But I don't know. They're going to have to come up with something because Adidas's basketball line is not that popping either. They signed Trey Young. But, dude, it's going to be watched. No, nah, because every fucking shoe they make, the fucking athletes get hurt in. Look at the Derrick Rose. <laughs> That's true. The Terrier ACLs 3.5s. Fuck. <laughs> yes. Terrier ACLs 3.5. So, I mean, I hope they fucking revamp that brand because it'd be nice to see. Um, it'd be nice to see some fucking variations in the market. But at the end of the day, are you okay with wearing shoes that. Was once owned by a Nazi sympathizer. Like, oh yeah, I heard about that. You know, the That's... brothers that started the company were part of the Nazi party. I don't know. Yeah, bro. That's, so I mean, uh, you know, some history. It's it's, it's history crazy, lesson bro. for everybody right here. For all you sneakerheads, you better know that shit. Well, the brother Rudolph, and then the brother brother uh, Adolf. You know. They, oh my gosh. And his nickname was Addy. That's where Adidas comes from. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so above that, bro, it's like they're they're members of the fucking Damn. Nazi party. You know what I'm saying? So you're endorsing a product that was associated with the extermination of Jews. Now, yeah. Rosie O'Donnell just got fi- uh, fired for making a black joke. Right. Calling that woman an ape. Yeah. Like, that's a whole company based off, like, ideals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, think about it though. What if there's like a cutoff point where like, oh, if it's like seventy years, bro, we're not even gonna touch it. <laughs> how long do you think? How long has Puma been around? Like for a while, for a long time, for like a good seven, seventy, well, 50 nineteen years, thirty maybe? something, something like that. Yeah, but I don't know. I think that's it's just a fucking marketing ploy. It's like, oh, Jay Z got pull right now. He's relevant. Yeah. We'll put him in front of it and. Every all the other inner workings will work itself out. Is he just like the the face of the brand, or is he actually going to revamp it himself? Is he signing the athletes to the campaign? Yeah, I need to know more. Yeah, Jay Z, you need to come out and fill us all in with uh, with your actual title and titles. <laughs> but yeah, man, yeah, crazy man, crazy week and crazy week and fucking news, huh? Yeah, man, it just seems like every time we're in the mix, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, man. What was I going to tell you? Um, oh, you know what? I wanted to circle back to music just for a split second because what we want to do, this is like, you know, we got these little segment things. We got the, the something new, you know, which is like we try something different. But I also want to like expand my horizon as far as like music goes. So every week I'm going to try to like look for something that's unfamiliar to me, possibly unfamiliar to my homie here. But either way, it might be unfamiliar to you, too. Just trying to spread out some good music. You know what I'm saying? Trying to share something new every week. You know what I mean? And chances are half the time you guys have probably already heard it. But this is me. This is my podcast. This is what I'm going to do. And the homie century is going to do it, too. So my jam of the week, I wanted to share, and I'm not. I'm obviously, I'm not going to play it, but I'm a big UGK fan. So I was listening to uh, Apple Music the other day, and I was just going through some UGK playlists and shit, and I landed on this song called "Wavy Bone" by ASAP Rocky, and I guess it came out in like 2015 at long last. ASAP, I think, is the name of the album, something like that. And I could have done without the Juicy J uh, verse, but. Chances are he probably had his hand in the beat or something like that. So he was there by default, probably. But I never had other than the the what is that song called? Problems. The one with him and Drake and uh, that Beachy Titty Boy. Two Chains. Two Chains. Two Chains. That, that song is the only other ASAP Rocky song I've ever really listened to. So, yeah, I'm, I've been up on ASAP for a while. Yeah. You were telling me, like, I don't know any of those dudes, honestly. Peso is one of the first ones. Um, I don't know the Ferg dude. I don't know. Um, ASAP Ferg goes hard. Yeah. And then who else is ASAP? Uh, isn't that dude Travis Scott? Was he one of them? Was no. he an ASAP dude? He's out of Houston. Oh, okay. 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 I'm tripping. 
But yeah, and then I know about the dude that passed away, the ASAP Yams, I guess his name yeah, was. Yeah, that was like their manager. Right. Yeah, I know about that dude. That dude died. But there was like a, there's a couple other ones, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Anyways, if you have ever not heard this song and you're a fan of UGK, definitely go check out Wavy Bone. That's a pretty, that's a pretty sick song right there. Yeah, you my stamp of approval on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you, what did you, uh, what did you uh, find? My, my, my uh, track of the week is um, a song by a Latin trap artist named Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. Probably heard about him on this podcast before. Right. Song's called Soy Peor. Yeah. And it's, it's a slapper, man. I mean, it's. It's checked, Latin trap. I like, checked it out. I fucked with it. I kept it. I you know, downloaded it. That's pretty dope. It feels like Latin emo, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like you can hear the, you can hear it in his voice. You know? Yeah. And um, the beats are banging, dude. So it's like, it's like the darker side of reggaeton. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, check that one out. Definitely check that one out. And then, I don't know. Like, I feel like I, I feel like I want to always throw in like an old one. Since I'm considered an old head, the old the OGs, I was listening to some Mac Dre the other day, like I was telling you. And I don't know if you've ever heard the song, I'm in Motion. You ever heard that one? No, no, I haven't. Okay, you need to check that one out because it's basically him uh, rapping from the cell, X-rated style. And okay. It, and recording over the phone, over this just disgustingly sick beat by made by Kyrie which was the dude that made a lot of the beats for uh, Young Black Brother back in the day, all the dudes from the Crest side. He did beats for Mac, Maul, Doobie, Young Lay, uh, Mac Dre, all those dudes. And there was there was actually a, a fucking album by him called The Rompulation. That was, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, The Blackulation. Okay. And that one was, that one was fire too. So do you get stupid or? Nah, nah, this is more, this is more, like this is like pre-thiz. Okay. Pre-thiz Mac Dre. Like, this was gangster Mac Dre. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm getting out of jail, Mac Dre. That's what's up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's some good shit right there. You know, but, um, my throwback track mm. uh, would be Jaquan, Tipsy. Jaquan, dude. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. You know, I DJed last Friday at uh, Club Congress, <clears throat> filling up for the homie. He was on tour and shit, so right. I had to hold it down, and I did. Um, humble brag, <laughs> but uh, no, that was one of the tracks I played. And, and for me, hitting somebody with a song that they never listen to on the regular, like just you haven't heard that in a good minute, yeah, like songs that you wouldn't even get in like a Pandora playlist, you know, yeah, you them, might get one, them one hit one, yeah, that just yeah, came yeah, and disappeared as shit. I just I like fucking people up with like songs that are just so left field, but they fit, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Like, it takes you back to a time where you didn't have much responsibility. Yeah. You know, like, it's just, you didn't have to take life so serious, you know? That's a slapping beat, too. Like that beat is tough right there. That one's cool. That's, I like, that's a great, every now and then I hear, what is it, that one, uh, what was the name of that one song by that, that, that Mexican dude that elbows up side to oh, side. Oh, fucking lean like a cholo. Elbows. Yes, lean like a cholo, dude. Like when that came out, dude, it was all right. It got old really fast. You know, for me, I never downloaded it. No? No. Even DJing it? You never nah, did? Nah, never no was. requests, huh? No. <sighs> Fuck. You got high standards. No, I mean. <laughs> I was just I, showing love. Request. I was showing love to the homie, man. Dude, I'll, I'll like, play requests, dude. I gotta but. play. Play some of the homies. I'm Spoken on it in the past podcast, like the homie Rip put me on. It'd be like, I don't take fucking requests. Oh shit! Like, like that. You know how good it feels telling somebody you fucking no. Like I tell them straight up, yo, if it's good, if, if you request a good song, I'll play it, and I might play it with you walking off the stage if it's that good. Uh -huh. But if it sucks, that fucking request is going. Right with the other requests. Yeah. You know, I'm fucking left field. I'm not fucking playing them. Damn. Y'all so. hear that, people? If you ever see DJ Century DJing, you better come correct with some good shit. Or, yeah. And I have a wide range of musical taste. So it's not going to be just hip hop music that you request I'm going to feel. Like, like when you when you go up to the stage, I mean, it's, it's this, it's, you're, you're, you're on. Like your time just started as shit. What's, what's like one of your favorite songs to start out with? Lately, it's been um, Ric Flair Drip Ric by Flair. Um, Offset and Metro Boomin. Okay. okay. Just because the bass line, 
Doom, 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 doom. It's it's so fucking loud in Congress. The speaker system there. I've never played in a venue that had a better speaker system than Congress. So they redid it, huh? Huh? I remember back in the day it was shit. Oh, really? Yeah. No, they have like concert series stacks. Okay. Hanging. I, haven't, I haven't been there in a while. Yeah, bro. I'll be there the 29th, which is next Friday. Next Friday? Yeah. We'll cover yeah. for the homie again. He's going to be in Kansas City. Oh, really? That tour live cat. Dude. Get that Dude. money. Doing it up, doing it up. Yeah. Do you ever like, is there ever a time like, I mean, obviously it's a DJ's fucking job to like keep the dance floor packed, but like, let's, is there a song that you just put on and like every time you're like, dude, like, I know this is going to kind of clear the thing, but I want no, to fuck show no. to play. You're just like, nope, I fuck keep that no. shit packed. No. So, so my whole thing is I don't have a set list at ever, ever. Not once. I don't no. have a set list. You just, whatever you feel good. <clears throat> I, I fucking just feel the groove, bro. Yeah. And 99% of the time. What do they say about Sex Panther? 60% it works 90% of the time? <laughs> it works 90% of the or 100% of the time, yeah. 90% of the time. Some, some shit, shit like, like that. that. Yeah. And and I just go with the gut feeling, bro, and I'm pretty good at like gauging a room at this point. Like I've been in a game for 20 years, so damn. You know, it's like, it's not even a it's like a Second nature. Tying your shoes in the morning, bro. That's yeah. how DJing is. That's dope. I don't even use the headphones. That's, that's good. What would be like, what would be a song that like, let's say the the crowd is kind of, it's not even your fault. There's just not a lot of people there. Like everybody's kind of at the bar. What do you throw on to get people to get the fuck out there and start <coughs> dancing? Fucking Usher. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one. That DMX. Doo -doo. Do, do. Yeah, that Dude, one. Dude, like once they hear that first melody, like they fucking rush they to the run, dance floor. Huh? I hate playing line dances. When I'm in a club, I won't. I won't play Cupid Shuffle. I ain't playing fucking Cha Cha Slide. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not playing them. I'm sorry, yeah. and all the other ones, Electric. What is it? Um, electric Slide. The one and two. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what the fuck you no. said. I remember one day I googled it. And I really tried. I really tried to be able to say, it, but it's like a fuckload of crazy words. Yeah, man. I mean. I just, I just, I just feel like those are certain. That's that's keeping certain yeah, that's right, right. It's keeping keeping yeah, that wedding shit. Yeah, yeah. that's not fucking con Congress shit. Well, that's when I'm Congress. in Congress, I still don't play what's top forty. Yeah. No, fuck really? no, no. I mean, do I do, but I don't. Like, you're not going to hear an oversaturation of just ninety three point seven. Yeah. But this fucking weekend was just. It was so much fun. Like, it was my dad's birthday. Right. And pops rolled through, showed some love. He showed he showed up at Congress. Yeah, did he bring your tata with him? No, it would have been yo. Bro. That would have been the trifecta, Dude, bro. That would have been like that's... three generations in that bitch. Man, so he um, but he showed up. That's cool. Showed man. up. Oh yeah, my brother came out. So we were all on stage. We took a picture and shit, and had our little fucking Kodak moment. You know? Hell yeah, that's and, tough. Uh, yeah, I just got so it, it in, was pretty, bro. It was pretty late on Friday. Yeah, man. It was literally from the minute I went on to the minute I stepped off stage. Like, I have a lot of venues that I've played at here in town. Yeah. And Congress is the most fun I've ever had in my life. Have you ever played at the Rialto? No. No, I haven't. No. I performed there one time. It was yeah. pretty dope. It was pretty That's Big. I, I like wouldn't it. mind. I it's wouldn't mind cool. getting up there and that's pretty cool. And I was gonna stop by, man, but I was fucking tired that night. No, I, I mean, went to that, but I did go to that um that show I was telling you about yeah. the Stack Styles uh, album release party. How was that? <sighs> man, like that doesn't sound I, good when you start off like well, oh, I'm gonna man. tell you I'm gonna tell you why is because by the time I got there, my homies had already gone up. They made them go up like a half hour early. Oh, that's why see the homie the homie Vinny Mendez had said that they were going up around nine. And like, dude, I got there like right at fucking nine, dude. I hauled ass on the free. I was like, dude, I gotta, I gotta make sure to see their set. And then they, I, I was texting them, and I was like, hey man, y'all on? Did y'all go on? And they didn't get back to me, so I like had that feeling. I was like, dude, they're probably on stage right now, phone all vibrating, fucking, fucking up the vibe and everything like that. And sure enough, I got there, and, and homie was nice enough. He had an extra ticket and shit. He was like, come on in, dude. Like, so I went inside, ran into a couple of the homies there. Actually, I ran into a lot of like, oh geez. Like in the game, dude. Like yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. Like it was a lot of dudes out there showing love to the homie Stack Styles and shit. And he he had he dropped his album release that night. But uh and then my homeboy Mikey, this dude that works at uh at the barbershop over there, I was in line to get drinks. I was like fucking ten people in front of me and he was like, Hey, 
He's like, come here, dog. He went to the side of the bar and shit. And he was like, get over here, get over here, like that. And fucking, this chick fucking bartender got me my drink, like, right away, dude. That's what's up. Shout out to Mikey for fucking hooking that shit. I was like, I was like, damn, you got it like that, huh, the bro? plug. And I was like, got to have homies like that. So, yeah, so I chill, I chill, had a beer. And then, yeah, waited till the homie came up, did his thing. The dude, Stack Styles, dropped a bunch, a couple of his shit. And I think I was out by, like, probably, like, 1030. I had um, chicks twerking on stage. Yeah. This one got up on me, and I was like, girl. You don't want want that? You're barking up the wrong tree. So I got behind her, and I started freak dancing. Did you really? Like, straight pissed her middle school freak dancing. Fuck, yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, like just on it. And she was with it for a while. But then I was like, I got a DJ, so. Do your thing. Go you know? mix. Yeah, I I really don't like people on stage. Yeah, no, because it's like I really want to talk to you, but right now what I'm doing is I'm mixing and I go track to track. You know, Serato. Yeah, I mean, I think now they have features where you could do auto DJ, like four tracks in a row or some shit. Like but that, I think, yeah. for me, I do track to track. My mixer is a two channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I run on the two you know turntables. Nice, and um. There is no auto button for me. So, no. like, macking to a chick isn't really easy, you know? Right. You just got to be like, hold up one second real quick. If I get lost in the sauce, bro, the mix is going <laughs> to fuck up. You know what I'm saying? They're going to look at me like an asshole. Give you one second, girl. Yeah. And then fucking I mean, bust out the new shit. Then come right back. You're like, okay, where were we? What's up? Hit it with a, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Burr, 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 underneath the table. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Hit her with that DJ Tangerine. Hey. I got that. I got a call of mine. You got it, really? Yeah. My homie Phil, he showed me a couple that he got that. Like, he, like, paid someone professional to do something. I started crack. I was like, that's fucking dope. But you don't do I'm telling you, dog. I still crack. I think that you should make one for the Hood Diner podcast with your creepy DJ voice. Oh, dude, no. Next to the stage. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> dude, that shit had me dying, fool. Every time I hear that part, dude, like, when I was editing the shit, I had that shit on loop for, like, a little bit because I was just cracking up laughing. <laughs> Coming up to the stage, official clothing. Dude, that's good, dude. <laughs> Get your dollars out. I'm like, fuck. Tip dude. your waitress. But the homie didn't have that voice, though, you know? Dude. DJ you know what's crazy? Century. Next day I woke up, I'm like, fuck, I wanna go back to the strip club, man. Like I was really trying to I was like, fuck, I'm not really balling right now. I'm not broke, but I'm not balling. But uh, if I go, I have to go get a bottle, you know? I mean, they're only hundred dollar bottles now. Dude, that's that you know what? I've been wanting to talk to like the homies at the at the strip club about that, dude. Cause that's just fucking that's just a highway robbery, what they be charging for bottles in a club, dude. Like, what is It's just the convenience. Like, you got to ball out. I'm going to go buy this $40 bottle of Ciroc for $150 over there. Right. Like, that That what it is? That's the, that's the gist of it? Because I don't get that part. I mean, chances are those chicks aren't going home with you. No. And then you're going to spend all that money over there, look like a baller. I get it. It's not tricking if you got it, but like, fuck, bro, I'm not. I ain't trying to fucking throw down five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars in the strip club. No. Fuck that. Fuck that. Throw them dollars up and be like, show me what you got. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> for real. Yeah, we're going to start introducing some sound effects up in this bitch. <laughs> I just explained that whole episode to my mom right now. She's like, let's get swifty because I was singing it. Yeah. Well, take a shit on the floor. <laughs> I'm Mr. Bulldog. Happy <laughs> <laughs> drawers and your panties. Oh, man. Dude, she's like, take a shit on the floor. What the f-? My mom don't cuss, but she was just tripping out. She started laughing. Dude. Yeah, I, w- I love showing my mom, like, stuff that she would never, ever bump into. Because she watches, like, three channels. Lifetime and I don't know the other channels, but, oh, like, Fox. She loves watching Empire. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it. Empire, that's uh that's the, the, mu- the music one, right? With uh what's Terrence her name? T- T- Taraji. Oh, Taraji Hansen. Taraji, yeah. I hate I've you, never, Jody. I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen any of I them. I hate you. Get out of here, Jody. Yeah. Tyrese. There was nothing more disturbing <laughs> after him like hitting her and then him just smashing right over and she's just like there like yeah, numb. Dude, oh my goodness. It's like, bro, stop. <laughs> like she's not vibing it right now. He's Blackened her eye. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was an extreme movie. I wasn't too big of a fan of it. You know that Tupac was supposed to play that right before he died, I think. Oh, word? Nah, I think I'm wrong. <laughs> I would have totally believed that, dog. I would have totally believed that. I think, I think I'm no thinking, bullshit. I think I'm thinking of Menace to Society. I think Pac was supposed to be O Dog, O-Dog in Menace to Society. But, okay, then, so, but then he wound up fucking uh, going, like, bumping heads with uh, one director? of the directors, I think, yeah. And I think that was the Hughes brothers, if I'm not mistaken. I don't that's even not know. Chris. That Singleton, is one of my favorite movies. Chris Singleton though. and shit, yeah. Got these cheeseburgers. <laughs> what you say about my mama? Dude. <laughs> you know that I have the director garment printer, right? Yeah. I want to print on some shoes. I want to put on one side, I want to put the shooter in the red car from Boys in the Hood. Right. And on the other side, I want to put Ricky with his back blown out. <laughs> How dope would those be? That's fucking morbid, bro. No, but, but you I mean, those are iconic scenes from that movie. They are, but that's death on your shoes, Dog. dude. Dog. Killing the game. That's death. <laughs> Killing the shoe guy, son. Dude, tell me you would have spent $100 for those Chuck Taylors in your size. Fuck no. No? <laughs> Not with Ricky all blasted. You know, but you I know like some Ricky. homies that would, right? I would rather have fucking O-Dog chugging a 40 on one and fucking... Uh, and blowing the chinos what is, out? what is his name? Fucking... Uh, what's the other dude's name? Trey? Trey fucking airboxing all pissed off like... <laughs> <laughs> I love that with fucking up. What was that? Uh, don't be a menace to drinking your juice in the hood. The way it shows me. He starts he's, knocking the kids he's out. knocking all the little kids out and shit. And she's all coming by me. He's all <laughs> sniffing Bro, her and shit. I, I'm pretty like, I don't, I, I'm not really sensitive when it comes to the movies. Like nothing really offends me. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like I can watch some the adult movies I watch are pretty nasty, but that's a whole different conversation. But like you when he started sucking on her toes with all that crust, bro, all I literally the hot sauce, dude. Oh, dude, it literally made me want to throw up when I was a kid, dude. Hot sauce. Like I was like, she was all, uh-huh. like, come on, like, they're not that bad, are they? Ugh. <laughs> he was ready, dude. That makes me fucking sound like push up. Yuck. Like, when I fucking think of that toe licking. Ugh. I, I do the. I call it the Michael Scott. When he's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Push is more dramatic with his. Yeah, I like Michael Scott's. His, ugh. He was fucking, he was, he, <laughs> he used to do that shit so much. I miss Michael Scott, man. Like, why, why did he have to leave? It's fucked up. It's so on my sick. Instagram the other day, I put up a poll. Who was a better uh, dad? Um, Carl Winslow or Danny Tanner? Oh, dude, I, I bet you Carl Winslow won that yeah, shit. Yeah, like he, he did. He did. Danny but Tanner. Danny Tanner was a single dad. But you want to know what? You want to know what it is? Is everybody remembers Danny Tanner for what he did after? Because <laughs> he's a maniaco, bro. See, he's a dirty motherfucker. I watched motherfucker. that show religiously, dog. So as far as the show's concerned, like he was a fucking all star dad. He was pretty dope. <clears throat> but he had, a, he had like, a deadbeat comedian in the basement. Yes, and a, f- a fancy motherfucker that doesn't age a, in the in the, in, in the base or the the attic. A failed musician in his fucking yeah. He's a vi- he's a vampire, dude. He's like Mario Lopez, dude. Like he just doesn't age. I never I've never seen him age at all. I don't even call him Mario Lopez. I just call him AC Slater. Slater, dude. Dude, speaking of that, dude, have you ever seen Zach Morris's trash? No. Did I send that to you? No. Dude, my sister one time sent me a video of um, a clip from Saved by the Bell where they're fighting AC Slater and Zach Morris uh-huh. to like a death metal song. Right. It was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dude. That was like when the meme game just started happening. You're going to you're going to have to make this a note. And anybody listening to me, if you've ever not heard or seen the YouTube episodes of Zach Morris's trash, please go watch them. Dude, it is the funniest shit ever. It's basically like a dude talking about how Zach Morris was just a fucking, just a self-righteous prick that was all about his own getting his dick wet and fucking this and that. And it's funny the way it's like, the way it's 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 said and everything. But it's like the dude in the very beginning, he does the Saved by the Bell thing, but he says Zach Morris, all, Zach Morris is trash. <laughs> dude, it's fucking hilarious, bro. Like just off that, my, my, uh, the high my cousin, right dude, my cousin in Phoenix, he showed that shit to me when I went to see him, like maybe like. Probably about a month and a half ago. Oh, my goodness. There's like, I think, like two, three seasons of that shit. And you got to fucking watch them. If you guys listen and you've never seen Zach Morris's trash, please do yourself a favor. I mean, especially if you're a fan of Saved by the Bell, because you will not look at Zach Morris the same. You will see him for the fucking douchebag that he really was. Yeah, well, 
He was definitely someone that reeked of white privilege. <laughs> you know? I mean, he used he used it. And he didn't used get it. expelled for some of the he, shit he got caught up with, bro. He like, used come it on, like a, he used it. You like a or G, I, bro, would have been bounced out of those at a Bayside High so fucking fast. He was a master manipulator. <laughs> Tell me if we pulled that shit at Bayside High, we would fucking get bounced Fuck out of there. No, dude, look at all the shit they gave Slater, dude. Slater didn't get treated the same. What is he though? And what is he? Is he Mexican? Oh, he's Mexican. We know he's Mexican, but what was he? I think he was Hawaiian in the show. Ah, okay. That dance. You ever see that meme where they dance? Where he, they just loop him dancing like that. No. Those, I've seen the one. It. I've seen the one of uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Have you ever seen that one from Kickboxer? You Apparently, just, and they can put that to so much different music. Like I seen one to him dancing to some Kanye shit, and it was just fucking hilarious. Apparently, he was fucking whacked out of his mind during the shooting of Street Fighter. Of that a Street Fighter. Remember Street when he was Guile? He was Guile in Street Fighter. Yeah. The movie. And he was whacked out of his mind, you said? Belligerently fucking high on cocaine. Yeah? Yeah. Where did you hear this? I don't know how true it is because it's on one of those fucking, you know how you're fucking scrolling on Instagram and you fucking hit a news article or something like that? Yeah. yeah. That's what I read on there. If it's on the internet, it's true. It's true. You got to believe that it's, it's all about the interwebs. The interwebs know it all. But yeah, man. Yeah, so. Oh, and you know what I meant to tell you, man, is... uh. Since we, we, this last weekend was Father's Day, I didn't get a chance to tell you happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. Happy Father's Day to DJ Sanchez. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not something that I, you know, I require praise for, but it appreciates to hear that from people because seeing the little girl my daughter's becoming is a little fumble. <laughs> seeing, seeing the little person she's becoming is like the greatest achievement. It's like playing The Sims in real life. Yeah, like you know the game The Sims. Uh-huh. It's it's literally playing in real life. It's like you dress them, you teach them how to do things, you teach them how to talk, you teach them not to say certain things around. You know, like it's just it's crazy, bro. It's yeah, I've seen I've seen your your snaps. Your little girl's cute as hell. Thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. And happy Father's Day to everybody that you know listens to the and, and happy uh, Father's Day to some single moms out there that like put mad work in that's true but like, don't have, but don't like they're not the first ones to be like oh, I'm, shout out to me for pulling down I'm a big fan of the ones that keep it in the in the, the shadows that they just yeah. do their thing and they don't fucking really need like yeah I don't need no man no no no, no not necessarily that like they don't <laughs> need no recognition it's like this is life yeah. this is what I gotta do regardless I feel like like, did you hear about the, the shit with Target where they pulled down the baby daddy card? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is that about? That's a little hood. That's a little hood right there. That's a little hood, Danny. I wish they had baby. No. Because. You can't get the baby mama card no. either. Yeah, see, that's, no, where, that's where they're like, if we that's see that on Mother's slope. Day, no, Target. The slippery slope right Sorry, there. Target. No. We, will, we will take our asses right to Walmart. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, um. It's a day that it's like you just save for barbecuing, you know? It's Father's not day. really a... Like, yeah. what do you do? They a, they advertise $3,000 diamond ring sales on Mother's Day, and then on Father's Day... Ties. They're trying to sell you a $12 pair of khakis at Old Navy. Yeah, man. Hey, dude. Daddies. That's what, the, that's what you get, brother. <laughs> we See, took, I didn't get my dad's shit. We took, we took my dad to go uh, eat breakfast at the hideout. I'm like, my mom birthed me, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> nice You went to the hideout have yeah. you, So you've been there After they remodeled Have you been there before Yeah Back in the day Hell yeah So what were your Opinions of the uh, Bar rescue Renovations It looks nice Yeah It looks nice It's definitely not a place Where you can take More than six people At a time Like we had to sit At the bar And we took like The whole fucking Back section of the Damn. bar Because it was like Eight of us But uh but it was good. It's kind of funny, man. It's like a crazy, it's like a crazy ass combination, like the buffet. It's like there's breakfast shit, but then there's also barbecue ribs and uh, grilled chicken, and then menudo. You know what I mean? And this dude, this little, this little, this little Mexicano dude was right there making the omelets and eggs, like fucking right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I don't like is that you have to tip the motherfucker, right? Nah. And it's not that that you have to him tip him, but you pull out your wallet. Your hands are washed from eating your food. You have to pull out your wallet and get out dirty ass money and tip them and then go to the bathroom and wash your hands again for touching the money. You know, I mean, at least that's my thought process. I'm sorry, man. I didn't even notice there was a tip jar at all. 
No, I mean, most of the time, the homies slinging the omelets like a thank you jar kind of shit. You Do know they have that there? Okay, my bad. Next time I go there, I'm going to make sure to break him off for, for that current time. I just want to tell him, hey, bro, wait until I'm fucking done. I'm going to come see you. Yeah. And if you you're, you get off before I'm done, you won't need more though next time. Mm-hmm. You're getting mm-hmm. paid anyway. You work here. Mm-hmm. I respect the service industry. Yeah, man. That's why I don't fucking talk shit to him. Oh, hell no. You can't. No matter how long Dude, I'm in the no. fucking If you saw that drive movie through. waiting, then you oh, know yeah. best. You know it's not. If, if I'm in like the drive through for 25 minutes before I can even place my order, as soon as I get to that fucking ordering menu box, huh. I'm the most polite person in the world. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't even be able to tell I'm Mexican. Like articulation, please and thank you. Annunciations. Yo, big time. Like, All that shit. Well, yes, I would love to try that special today. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the hood, diner. Can I take your order? One of these days. One of these days we'll, we'll, we'll actually post up in a diner and like eat breakfast and just have people listen to us eating eggs and we'll bacon. We have to do a segment where we go grab a, uh, maybe a post-gym meal or something, you know? Hood diner? Yeah. Like hood diner. One time a week, you know, we hit the gym or whatever, and then we'll go hit like a like a post gym meal or something. Fuck yeah! Or cook something, share a recipe. Mm-hmm. On that Mar- Martha Stewart tip. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. Well, I think we come to the end of another episode of the the Hood Diner. We did, man. That was a good one. We yeah. talked about a lot of shit. It was a lot of shit to cover today. I think we kind of we kind of kind of killed it all. <laughs> we did. We did. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, man. If you stuck around this far, we fucking love you. We appreciate you. And make sure you keep tuning in. Um, for those that were waiting, we are finally on Stitcher. So uh, if you're big on the whole Stitcher situation, go ahead and add us there. And, um, yeah, still on Apple. Still on uh, 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 what is it? Uh, Google Music. And still on SoundCloud. We're just waiting on that motherfucking. We're just waiting on uh, Spotify. Apparently, the Spotify situation takes a little bit of time, but we're waiting for it. We're waiting for it. Yeah, it'll get, it'll get handled. You know, yeah. once they get submitted, it gets expedited after that, you know. But, um, yeah, man, tune in next week and uh, we'll bring you on another funky adventure. All right. This is DJ Century. And I am the homie Casual, and you've been listening to the Hood Diner Podcast. Peace. Peace.